Why are there practically no NC-17 films, but there's a ton rated R? Why does my 60-something-year-old father refer to PG and PG-13 movies as both PG? It all has to do with the history of the Motion Picture Association, or the MPA. This organization, formerly known as the MPAA, the MPPDA, with the PPDA and the PCA. Anyway, this organization was formed all the way back in 1922. There weren't movie ratings in 1922. The biggest concern for movie studios was making sure the American government didn't start censoring their films. So the MPPDA struck first and censored themselves. None of the movies had ratings back then. They were all supposed to be appropriate and not a blah, 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 blah. Nobody cares. That just sounds like a snooze fest. Can you imagine if the government made laws back then like no kissing for more than 1.5 seconds or only two kisses in a movie i feel like they would have done it because you know alcohol was illegal anyway society changes over time and studios had to reflect that change audience members did not want shirley temple tap dancing forever okay things came to a head in 1966 with who's afraid of virginia wolf a film you've definitely heard of but you have no idea why you've heard of it when warner brothers executives first saw a cut of this film an exact quote was my god we've got a seven million dollar dirty movie on our hands so you know, this movie had sexual content and language that nobody had ever seen in a movie like this, mind you, because it was based off a play and the play was worse. Quite honestly, I'm not really sure why this kind of content being in a movie was such a big deal when it was already in a play. The play, for example, at one point said F you, like the actual word. They didn't say F you, they said <laughs> Well, I didn't say it just there. I just added a bleeping sound. Um, anyway, the movie replaced with Screw You, and apparently Screw You was a big deal at the time. When the film was released, all theaters showing the movie were under contract to keep everybody under 18 out of the theater. So you must be wondering, what happened to this scandalous film? It was the third highest grossing movie of the year. The number two spot went to a Julie Andrews movie. The number one spot went to a film called The Bible in the Beginning, which I think is really ironic. There was an audience for all types of content in 1966, both historical, biblical, epics and screw yous. So obviously the MP, whatever it was called in 1966, needed to update its standards. In 1968, the MPAA premiered three official film ratings, but there were actually four, but there were really six. I'll definitely go into this, but we're gonna start with the four. The lowest rating was G for general audiences. This meant a film was not offensive and okay for absolutely everybody. Take your six-year-old, take your grandma, I don't know your life. The R rating was also introduced, which meant nobody under 16 years old was allowed without a parent or guardian. Meaning, your grandma could take your six-year-old. But I feel like there's better activities for a grandmother to do with a six-year-old than take them to an R-rated movie, but again, I do not know your life. The final official MPAA rating was called M. In modern times, M means like really violent video game. I don't really know. But in 1968, M meant mature audiences. Parental discretion was advised and the M rating sat between the G and the R and the unofficial rating was called X. I don't know why I said that so ominously. X. No one under the age of 17 was admitted to an X film. So you could take your grandma if you wanted to, but you better hire a sitter for your six-year-old. The MPAA kind of referred to the X rating, but it wasn't one of their official ratings, so anybody could technically do whatever they wanted with it. And they did. If a movie wanted to be X, then it was X. The glaring gap here is the PG-13. 1970 saw some changes. Parents weren't sure if something rated mature was better or worse than restricted. If I didn't know any better, I might think that it's okay to bring a kid to a restricted movie, but not a mature movie. I'm sure several mistakes were made and <laughs> dramas were formed during this time period. A moment of silence for kids who were accidentally taken to our movies and not M's. 
Thank you. I'm kidding, hopefully. I don't think it was that serious, but it was enough of an issue that clarification was needed. So in 1970, rated M was changed to rated GP, which meant to signify that parental guidance was suggested. But that was renamed in 1972 to PG, because GP seems like it stands for guidance parental, even though it was actually parental guidance. So logically, it should have always been PG, and I really don't understand why they did GP. You live and you learn. Live, laugh, love. So from 1972 to 1984, we had the ratings G, P, G, and R, and the unofficial X. Which is why my father only uses PG to describe PG and PG-13. I don't think he ever got with the times with that department. PG to R, however, is a huge gap. So what movie exposed that gap and changed the rating system forever, you ask? In 1984, two movies, actually. Gremlins and Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom. I still wanna talk about those two unofficial ratings we haven't mentioned yet. X was the wild west of movie ratings because it was not regulated. And you know, people wanted to be a little saucy, so they expanded past the just standard X. Eventually, there were three classifications of X. X, double X, and triple X. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> X, double X, and triple X. If you're enjoying this video, please give it a like so YouTube shows it to more people. Or don't. I don't know your life, but I'd appreciate it. Still unofficially, X meant no kids, and that was it. But since there is no regulation, double X became a thing, which, let's just say, that was used to describe, um, softer movies. Fill in the blank. There was also triple X, which was used to describe, um, Harder movies. Because naughty movies were running in movie theaters with double and triple X ratings, general public members began to think that anything with an X, even just the single X, signified something something. Due to this perception, movie theaters stopped showing X movies, and a lot of places didn't want to run advertisements for an X-rated movie. Therefore, X became really not that profitable. Anyway, back to PG-13 movies. The kitchen scene in Gremlins, and the human sacrifice scene in Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, those scenes were the ones that really brought up the conversation. Steven Spielberg, who directed Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom, is actually the one who suggested the PG-13 rating. PG-13 stands for Parents Strongly Cautioned. Some material may be inappropriate for children under the age of 13. And this time, they got the P and the G in the right order. In 1990, the MPAA, as it was called at the time, said, Enough with the Wild West of the XXX. They made a new official classification of movie rating, except it wasn't X, it was NC-17. NC-17 stands for No Children Under 17. This, in essence, replaced the single X. So if a new rating was made for clarification, why don't we have more NC-17 movies in theaters? Because exactly what many of you watching think. Because what I used to think. Honestly, I've never seen an NC-17 movie. I don't know. But I will admit that I now understand the stigma behind it. Because double and triple X essentially defined the single X. And NC-17 replaced the X. Moviegoers think that NC-17 is triple X. Theaters don't want to play NC-17 films because they're thought of as being too much. Media channels don't want to advertise these movies either. When these movies have rarely been put in movie theaters, audience members don't show up. When a movie is given an NC-17 rating by the MPA, it is considered the kiss of death for profitability. A film studio can have a rating in mind for a movie when it's in production, but the MPA can assign it something else. The Conjuring, for example, was intended to be rated PG-13 during production. After review, the MPAA at the time, the extra A was there, the MPAA at the time <laughs> rated it R for being, and I quote, too scary. There were no specific moments that warranted the rating that the movie makers could just take out. Instead, the MPAA told them it was the whole thing. It was just too scary, so it was gonna be rated R. The filmmakers decided just to keep it rated R. So what happens when a movie is submitted to the MPA? formerly the MPAA, and it receives that NC-17 rating. American Pie, The Godfather Part 3, Boogie Nights. 
What was the other one? American Pie, Boogie Nights, The Godfather Part 3, Braveheart, all received NC-17 ratings initially, and yet they were all released as rated R. When a film receives a rating a studio doesn't want, the studio can appeal the rating or they can make some edits and resubmit. PG-13 is actually the most profitable rating because most audience members assume that G and PG movies are you know, a little kitty, and R-rated movies are a little bit more intense. So PG-13 is that sweet spot that basically everybody can go to unless you're like, Four. Through either appeal with the ratings board or re-edits, films like The Perks of Being a Wallflower, Eat, Pray, Love, Zoolander were rated R upon submission, but later lowered to PG-13. In our current day, has the rating system been worked to perfection? No. Absolutely not. The Passion of the Christ, for example, received an R rating. However, the film was described as being grotesquely violent, and many film professionals wondered if it would have been rated NC-17 if it was not about Jesus Christ, because similar R-rated films were not that violent. Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness was rated PG-13. There was a lot of discourse whether or not it should have been rated R for its kind of gruesome violent sequences. These examples are just the tip of the iceberg. The last MPA ratings update was made in 1996 when the minimum age of NC-17 was raised from 17 to 18. So it was NC-17, no children under 17, and now it's no children under 18 called NC-17. Whatever. Has society reached the point where we need a ratings update? What do you think? If you'd like to know how Star Wars changed the world, click on this video next.